As you arrive in New York City for the first time, it soon becomes apparent that this is a huge, busy, bustling, colourful place, a melting pot of eras, cultures, people and languages. But we wanted to go beyond the bright lights of Manhattan, taking the Seven Line out to Queens to the Hong Kong Dragon Boat Festival, a perfect example of just how multicultural and multilingual this city really is. But this was just one stop on the Seven Line, a subway journey starting in Manhattan and ending here in Queens, a subway journey through a multitude of cultures, communities and languages at every station. As a complete newbie to New York, I needed help, so I met with Benny Lewis, otherwise known as the Irish polyglot from Fluent in Three Months and relatively recent resident of New York City, to find out what it's like living here as a language learner. I have been surprised at the amount of languages that I've been able to use in the city. It's a bustling city, it's got everything you could possibly want, it's multicultural, it's open-minded. I feel like I've got the entire world right here. New York is the kind of city that you are definitely going to hear a lot of languages, whether it's from people who live in New York or from the tourists who are walking around New York. And that's going to inspire you to learn languages. And I feel like a lot of other places, especially a lot of other places in the US, you you would start to think the whole world just speaks English. You know, you live in this bubble and in New York, that's not possible. You- Benny's right. A 2015 report found approximately 192 languages spoken across the five boroughs of New York City. As the lure of New York has spread, many people and their languages are drawn here, including some speakers of endangered languages. I spoke to Ross from the Endangered Language Alliance based here in New York to find out what they're doing. My name is Ross Perlin. I'm one of the directors of the Endangered Language Alliance, a nonprofit here in New York that's dedicated to documenting and supporting endangered languages, both here in New York and around the world. I asked Ross how he would describe New York in terms of languages. We talk about it as a kind of a different kind of linguistic hotspot. So that term linguistic hotspot has been used uh, recently to talk about places like Papua New Guinea and the Himalayas and uh, uh, West Africa, areas of really high linguistic diversity, often because of kind of natural features like you know, they're composed of islands or mountains, uh, and, and they've been kind of outside of the systems of nationalism and capitalism, which tend to kind of bring single languages uh, to places. Uh, but New York, it's a different kind of linguistic hotspot. It's one based on migration and change and uh, human density. By our kind of estimation, is the most multilingual city anywhere in the world, with, we estimate, as many as you know, 600 to 800 languages depending on how you count languages and dialects, a whole other issue, but um, spoken in the New York metropolitan area. So why the discrepancy with the numbers from earlier? The 2015 report logged languages spoken at home, whereas Ross and the Endangered Language Alliance have conducted their research based on linguistic evidence, including multiple languages that people speak, not just the preferred language used in the home. New York City is, uh, you know, this kind of hyper-dense microcosm. It doesn't exactly represent, you know, whole, certain regions are not as well represented as others, for sure. Uh, but it's a place where, as, as linguists and, and, and language speakers and activists, you can get on the subway half an hour away and you can, you can hear a language that otherwise, you know, you wouldn't be able to hear for thousands, thousands of miles. And the Seven Line is a perfect example of this. But what makes the number Seven Line so special isn't just that it connects west to east and east to west, but also the number of languages and communities you encounter at each stop along the line. From 34th Street Hudson Yards in western Manhattan, via the lights of Times Square and the grandeur of Grand Central Station, the line emerges on the other side of the river in Queens, where every station brings different language communities. When we were talking to people in, um, in our Airbnb, they said to us that, oh, if you're interested in languages, then you have to go to Jackson Heights. So far, lots of Spanish, Korean, Chinese, even got a free Spanish paper. There's job adverts only in, in Spanish so far as well. Really, really interesting, the differences in the different areas. <sighs> so much is bilingual. It's really cool. I've got a free Spanish newspaper as soon as we left the uh, metro station. Where should we go now? A 
few stops further down the line and we're back in Flushing, home to the second largest Chinatown in New York City. And Spanish is harder to find. I spoke to Daniel and Freddie, New Yorkers and founders of Wikitongues, to find out more about the linguistic diversity of Queens. This is one of the few places in the world where the, the government actually takes interest in linguistic diversity. And so that happens most prominently in Queens, because, uh, you know, so we say New York is the most linguistically dense city in the world. Queens is the most linguistically dense of the five boroughs of New York. And so there are signs in Wolof and then signs in Cantonese and then signs in Tibetan. It would be hard pressed to not walk down the street and, you know, be in the presence of 16 different nationalities and in, mm-hmm. within the, you know, 10 yard stretch. Even just riding the subway and not getting off at every stop, you're still met with a montage of sounds and voices reflecting the communities that call this city home. We spoke to another local, Nadette, about her experiences living in such a multilingual city. You know, now I I definitely feel like I'm a New Yorker, having been here most of my adult life. And I definitely think a part of the draw is uh, just the cosmopolitan aspect of it, the, the incredible amount of diversity you know, different nationalities, different languages. There's so much. You know, coming to New York for me was like, this is home. Yeah. Um, and what I do consistently love is really um, the languages that one hears. When, when, when it's, it, The cab drivers, for sure. I mean, it's a stereotype, but um, it's amazing. It's amazing the diversity of... Um, nationalities and I'm always I always ask where you where are you born I've learned to I've learned to say thank you in as many languages as I can so I'm always like where are you born I'm like shukran you know where are you born shukriya you know <laughs> you know if you want to travel to another country there is another you have to just find the right neighborhood of New York City I mean the more I think about it it's, it's yeah I feel really blessed like I don't I don't need to travel the world to travel the world I live in New York City it's, it's funny because my first time ever in New York was before I got into language learning and I was still amazed at all the languages that I heard. But my first, my second time coming back to New York many years later, um, it was funny because I was coming through very quickly on my book tour and I, I got a little overwhelmed because I had been in other cities. I had met people who read my blog and pr- I practice a few languages with them. But here in New York, I met fellow passionate language learners and I got bombarded with every language I've ever dabbled in and I felt pretty ina- inadequate when I, I was um, I needed to practice languages I hadn't practiced in a very long time. So I feel like New York, that's a good thing. That's kind of showing how many languages you can practice in this city. New York is a city that inspires you to do stuff. You know, you don't come to New York to relax necessarily. You come to New York to hustle. Uh, People are um, kind of always pushing you to go further. And and I like that. I want want to try to make a difference. And I feel like I can learn a lot from the people in New York to do that. But not every language spoken in New York is one that you're likely to be studying or even have heard of. With the city being home to, in some cases, the last speakers of languages. The Endangered Language Alliance, we work with a wide variety of of, of, of communities, especially immigrant communities, diaspora communities, refugee communities, and individual speakers of smaller, endangered, and minority languages, especially here in New York, which by our kind of estimation is the most multilingual city anywhere in the world. You know, besides those kind of stable, significant language communities, there's a lot of languages here which actually have just like one speaker or two speakers who are here for a while, you know, or a couple of years, or, uh, you know, maybe they, they commute in from somewhere else, but, um, you know, it's, uh, whatever it is, there, there's, there's no question that kind of uh, you can find languages from you know, every corner of the globe here, pretty much. What, what do you think it is that draws people to New York? Primarily, it's it's about livelihood, I think. Um, you know, it's about New York as an engine of, 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 of money and jobs and opportunity. Um, and, you know, since 1965, this kind of key immigration act in the U.S. that kind of did open the doors to, uh, you know, the, the, the wider world um, in a way that, you know, um, other places have as well, but but in New York, the archetypal New Yorker is an immigrant. Um, I'm constantly surprised by the languages that, uh, that, 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 that people speak here, that you hear about. Endangered languages don't 
have a constituency like that. The people who care about endangered languages are speakers of endangered languages who have the least money, the least power, you know, and then a few linguists and whatever. But uh, but I think to have polyglots and language learners and language lovers to become a constituency that actually supports endangered language work in some way would be could, be could be very important. The Endangered Language Alliance does some amazing work in New York to support language diversity, from creating radio shows to teaching classes to organising events. But they're not the only ones. Back to Daniel and Freddie to learn more about Wikitongues. I asked Daniel why endangered languages matter. I would ask why does every language matter? Um, and that's because every language is the vehicle of expression uh, for a given community of people. Language is important. When you, when you, when you look at language at full scale, everyone kind of gets a seat at the table. Um, there is not one community that can be erased if you talk about every language. This passion for languages led Daniel and Freddie to founding Wikitongues, a platform for every language in the Wiki world. Wikitongues started as a personal project. So by the end of 2015, uh, we started a, a nonprofit um, around the idea of Wikitongues and over the past uh, almost two years now have been growing the volunteer community and the uh, Wikitongues movement. So we have about 600 contributors around the world right now in 40 different countries. And in addition to our work toward building, we're also working on open source solutions uh, for language documentation. I, I, at least I don't remember uh, choosing to start this in New York. I think we were just in New York and started yeah. it. Uh, it's not that we made a, a, a deliberate choice to relocate to New York for the purpose of founding Wikitongues. It would, there are some places in the world that have similar levels of diversity, but New York is really... Um, it's also home. Yeah. And a message to the tourism board. We'll take your money anytime. <laughs> <laughs> New York City is huge, there's no denying it. Eight million people, potentially 800 languages spoken. Oh, the diversity here is insane. And if there's a language you're looking for, you're pretty much almost guaranteed to find it here on the streets. This place is like nowhere else on earth. If you're learning languages and you love this stuff, then you're gonna love New York City, just like I did. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to check out the sister podcast to this episode. Just search language stories on your favorite podcast directory. And of course, if you have a language story or you know someone who does that you'd love to share, then get in touch. Details are in the description below this video. As always, remember to subscribe for regular language learning videos and I'll see you very soon. Thank you. Bye.